The streak is over. Kevin Nash, Big Sexy of the Wolfpack, is the heavyweight champion of the world. December 27, 98, the streak was stopped on 173 wins as Bill Goldberg got his first loss on record, losing the WCW title to Nash after Scott Hall's interference in a hot main event at Starcade 98. WCW opened the show for the follow-up on the two big matches from last night, showing Eric Bischoff and NWO Hollywood celebration inside the limousine after beating Ric Flair with Kurt Hennig's interference. The announcers recapped the event while hyping two big segments for later with Flair and Nash responding to what happened last night in both matches. Around seven minutes before Raw went on the air, Mean Gene introduced Ric Flair to a big ovation from the Baltimore crowd, coming to the ring with luggage saying that he was on his way home after losing last night, but then changed his mind and told the flight attendant to take him to Baltimore. Flair began taking off his custom-made designer clothes, telling Eric that he lived this lifestyle because the people allowed him to do it. $2,000 alligator belt. $30,000 gold Rolex, all his money house and cars, he will sign everything he has over to Bischoff and leave the wrestling world forever on one condition, he wrestles him tonight in a rematch and if Flair wins, he gets to run WCW for 90 days. Going crazy in the ring in his boxers, Flair pulled out handcuffs and cuffed himself to the ring rope, saying that he's not leaving until Eric comes out as Mean Gene tells him that they need to go to commercials seconds before 9 p.m. Flair takes the microphone warning Bischoff that if he turns the camera off, when they come back from commercial he will be naked in the ring, ending a classic performance in an all-time great promo. The corporation opened draw in the bowels of the Pepsi Arena in Albany searching for mankind, with Vince promising to get everyone who was responsible for Shane getting attacked last week, including firing Commissioner Shawn Michaels the moment he enters the building. The corporate crew entered the boiler room as mankind attacked before the group took control and laid him out, booking him in a hardcore match with Road Dog for later in the show. In the ring Road Dog was booked by Michaels to wrestle Valvini's, but Vince sent the team to scrap the match and attack both, bringing out DX for the save. Vince promised that they're gonna pay with several Corporation vs DX matches booked for tonight. WCW returned from commercial with Flair still handcuffed. Eric came out moments later going over all the things he put Flair through in the last year, saying that nothing is going to be better than taking all his money and accepting the match for the main event. Flair continued to go crazy as Eric told him to calm down before getting another heart attack, Flair responded saying that if he dies of a heart attack, it will be on top of Eric's girlfriend. Telling him that they're booked and he's a dead man, ending another memorable Flair Bischoff segment. In an angle throughout the show, Vince sent Patterson and Briscoe to get Kane in line after forcing him to join the corporation last week. With Al Snow vs Edge coming up next. WCW took the lead in the second quarter bumping to a 4.4 rating for the follow-up explanation of the Goldberg Scott Hall taser incident from last night, recapping the match with pictures and bringing out a member of the security team to explain the effects of it on the body, establishing the stun gun as the main reason Goldberg lost the match as it can temporarily shut a person's nervous system. Moments later Disco was shown backstage talking with Conan, Disco wearing a Wolfpack shirt thinking he's now part of the group after trying to help Nash by interfering in the main event last night. Conan told him that Nash is looking for him as Nash showed up. Nash told him that he didn't ask for help and it ruined his title win, saying that he will give Disco a chance to join the Wolfpack if he wins his next match, and that he will be in the ring soon for the follow-up promo on everything that happened.
Raw jumped over 800,000 viewers to a first hour high 4.6 rating for a Bossman vs X pack match, along with a great comedic Vince and Shane training skit hyping Vince's preparation for his debut match at the Rumble. With Shane as the personal trainer pushing Vince to get in peak condition for the match and eventual confrontation with Austin during it. WCW had four of the top cruiserweights in the world next with Eddie Guerrero and Juventud against Mysterio and Kidman going 16 minutes in a fast-paced match with some spectacular spots. The second half of the match in the hype new WCW champion Nash interview, jumped over 800,000 viewers to a 4.8 rating, with WCW overall winning the first hour with a 4.4 to a 4.3. Nash stated that last night it wasn't about money, saying that there's not a person in the world he loves more than Scott Hall but what he did last night was wrong. Saying that he has nothing but respect for Goldberg and demanding the committee to book the rematch for next Monday in Atlanta. Nash said that he knows he can beat Goldberg clean, leaving the Goldberg name plate on the belt until next week. The second hour saw Raw jump big gaining over 1.2 million viewers at the top of the hour for Shamrock vs Triple H, along with the acolytes attacking and kidnapping Dennis Knight, after saying that a mysterious person told him to be here, building up the start of Undertaker's ministry. Disco's match ended up being against the second person interfering in the main event last night, as Bam Bam Bigelow beat Disco with him still not part of the Wolfpack. On the last show of 1998, both companies recorded all-time peak business with the ball rolling for a huge 1999. The year saw the WWF breaking almost all revenue records in company history, and WCW having the highest grossing year for a company in the history of the industry. WCW hyped a special statement from Ric Flair's doctor regarding his incident a few weeks back, saying that it wasn't a heart attack but blood tests revealed that Flair might have been poisoned, as Mean Gene immediately went to Bischoff for his reaction. Eric said that the doctor is a quack and he's gonna sue him, with the idea of him hoping that the doctor would not allow Flair to wrestle in the match later tonight. WCW had Scott Steiner vs Conan for the TV title continuing to plant the seeds for the big angle planned for next Monday, as Lex Luger came out to help Conan but accidentally cost him the match in the belt. Next on Ross on the corporation take out Godfather and putting Kanan's head against Billy Gunn, going against Scott Hall vs Brian Adams. Rock came out for commentary making his first appearance on the show at around 10.50 p.m., as Rock was sitting at the announcer's desk, Shawn Michaels finally arrived at the building with the hyped segment with Vince coming up next. Rock ran down road dog Michael Cole and Mankind throughout the match, notably blasting Jesse James for his pre-match routine with them having legit heat. Foley and Road Dog went 9 minutes in a violent hardcore match ending up with Rock leaving the table and giving Foley a rock bottom on the concrete floor, continuing to set up future matches between them in the next month. The match and post-match peaked the night for Raw with a 5.5 rating, with the McMahon Michaels segment about to start already in the overrun. 
Ric Flair vs Eric Bischoff was next in a match built as the most important match in Nitro history. With Flair in the ring, Eric went to his limousine trying to leave the building, but just as entering Mongo came out with the horseman dragging Eric back to the ring. Vince McMahon immediately came out after the match with the show already around two minutes in the overrun. Vince said during the last 10 years he put millions in marketing and promotion for Shawn Michaels, and he did become one of the greatest of all time until he started to bite the hand that feed him. Vince said that he gave him a second chance as commissioner but he betrayed him again and sucks in the role. Repeating the famous Michaels line saying that Vince McMahon doesn't lay down for anybody, firing him on the spot. Michaels sold for a second before super kicking him as the corporation ran down to end the broadcast with the show going long and having around 2 to 3 minutes unopposed. Flair vs Bischoff picked up huge, gaining over 2 million viewers to beat the night with a big 6.2 rating. Flair was in control until the NWO came out with the horsemen holding them off until Giant got into the ring attacking Flair. As that was happening, a familiar face with a new look was walking to the ring as Randy Savage made his television return for the first time since June in a big surprise taking out Giant. Flair then put on the figure four as Bischoff tapped to a huge pop. Ending the record-breaking 1998 with WCW and Flair celebrating in the ring to close the show.